Rahman Dikti, Professor Dr. Adda Sala, Professor Dr. Ahmed Shed, uh, or Dr. Ahmed Shed will be here, or he will come. Yes, yes, you are here. Okay. Uh, Professor Dr. Maggi Schaider, Professor Dr. Malak Yusuf Salah Eddin Kortu, uh, Professor Dr. Muhammad Aziz, <coughs> Professor Dr. Nagla Karim, Professor Dr. Rabab Ghafar, and Professor Dr. Rasmi Salah. Yes, and now I would like to uh, ask Professor Muhammad, uh, Muhammad Aziz from the National Health Respect. He's going to speak about the National Dr. Muhammad, uh, you will see the other lecture, which is what we are lagging in uh, regarding diagnosis and disease evaluation. Is that so? Dr. Muhammad, you will see the next, the other lecture, not the first lecture. I know, I know, I'm going, uh, yes. I, uh, for the sake of time, we decided to cut my two toes into only one toe. Uh, so uh, I'm talking about uh, what you see of the molecular biomarkers in clinical development and I will know how it was a successful uh, story but how much challenges we had and how did we handle that. Uh, before anything, I would like uh, to thank very much Dr. Hussein Khalid and uh, Dr. Nadia Zakhari, Dr. Imad Ismail and the distinguished uh, committee who organized this uh, meeting. And before anything, I have to echo the words of Dr. Hussein and Dr. Nadia uh, about the objectives, really, of this meeting. Uh, I think we are not here for a traditional uh, meeting. Uh, we went through uh, many of the formal uh, presentations. I believe, as my discussion with uh, Dr. Hussein and uh, Dr. Nadia, that the goal of this meeting is actually the experts, the Egyptian experts, those who are here practicing in Egypt and those like us who are practicing outside of Egypt, we are here to show you what and how we do things in the United States and we learn from you how we are doing things in Egypt, then that practically and the very, in a very practical way, how we close the gap and how we come up with actionable actionable items uh, and uh, to be very practical, uh, not to copy uh, because circumstances are different. By the way, I don't care how many slides I'm showing here, I am not here to show you slides, I am here you to give you my experience about a uh, surgical pathologist uh, in the right space and uh, my recommendation uh, for uh, 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 how can we cooperate or close again. Uh, after this introduction, I am Mohammed Aziz and I am a, a professor of pathology at Hofstra University and at the American University of the Caribbean and the beautiful island of uh, San Martin in the Caribbean, the Dutch section. Before that, I was a senior director of uh, the Division of Cytopathology in uh, North Shore LIJ Health System, the fastest growing system in the United States, and I was involved in the leadership group that performed the consolidation of 21 hospitals in Long Island, Manhattan, and upstate New York. And I was running the cytology department in the entire system. Uh, before that, uh, I was the vice president of uh, Omega Dad Diagnostic. So with this great background, what I will do is I will share with you uh, just the trip, how we went through the, this beautiful uh, success story and the challenges uh, we had. As I said, it doesn't matter how many slides I will go through because I will save the last five minutes to actually give my specific recommendations and I'm talking here as a surgical pathologist. And I am honored to see our legendary uh, professor, uh, Dr. Mukhtar, and uh, we hear about you and we know about your team led by Dr. Bahrawi. And uh, let me tell you my experience in two days here. I left Egypt to the United States in uh, 1984 
almost 30, 40 years uh, ago. And unfortunately, I wasn't involved with medical conferences here in Egypt. I have to admit, this is my first experience. So I have to tell you my impression in these two days. My impression is that disease is the same. The mechanisms are the same. The expertise are the same, if not even better, in Egypt. The point is the application. Of course, we have different patient population. And the whole, I, I hear a lot in these two days, I hear about we have to, we have to. The knowledge is there, the expertise is there, but it is the application. So I will tell you uh, what we did in the right states, and I gave you my specific recommendation. So the outline of this talk, uh, I don't have to go through it all. The most important is the green part, the technical issue related to getting the samples and how uh, we hear about all of these tests, molecular, molecular. But if you don't have the appropriate material, you cannot do any test. And if you, have, if you don't have enough material, you have to go again to get more material. So how about the cost effectiveness here? So uh, I was planning just to remind you very, very uh, casually, really, about what the story of the target medicine. Then the success story, we all know now how success was Egypt, or Al Iraq, and whatever. Then the main challenges, and I think our professors from the United States know very well how the story started. I personally divide it into scientific, technical challenges, and economical challenges, and political challenges. Uh, scientific will go through this. Economical, we know the cost of these uh, targeted uh, drugs, and political. I have to tell you the story of the United States. The thing is that there was extreme, and still extreme rush by the manufacturers to promote uh, uh, equipment and testing and whatever, even before full validation. And uh, this definitely uh, we have to deal with. Uh, the challenging story here philosophy in the early days, and uh, Dr. Talat maybe remembers uh, the days, uh, how much you are spending in this molecular testing. Uh, billions of dollars are being spent, and many other people don't have insurance. So we faced the fact by two things. Number one, the manufacturers and the push from the manufacturers. And second, we realize that we are scientists. We have to do our best in our testing and leave the politics for the politician. Then uh, the main ch uh, challenges, as you know, uh, will become more and more demand for accurate and reliable identification of the patient outcome. In the early days, even until now, there are many, many ongoing drug failure. Why? We have regulatory authority, we have the endorsement authority, and this will cost the drug development. And I will just, in a few minutes, I'll share with you how we overcame uh, uh, this. And this is will be what's in the United States, and we'll see how things are done uh, in Egypt. Uh, we all know now, it seems like we are moving from the anatomical diagnosis of diseases into the molecular uh, diagnosis. We very soon are not talking about lung cancer, because we are talking the issue of positive or negative. <coughs> we have gone a long way in hematology. This, I'm not hematopathologist, so I need it for the experts, but very much in hematology we are moving into this. And in the early days, that was our goal. Our goal was, listen, if we have many cancers, for example, melanoma, papillary thyroid carcinoma, hairy cell leukemia, colon endocarcinoma, Langerhans cell histocytosis, and if we all have one abnormality and we have BRAF uh, mutation, can we have one drug that can deal with all of this? So this is optimistic kind of uh, feeling we have. In the right states, we are still. Uh, ongoing, we it's not completely established. The main difference, I have to say, between Egypt and the United States, as I noticed in these few days, is we don't have what we say we have to, uh, because we develop the linking. You have to do.
this, so it's mandatory. Otherwise, you don't even know your license. So we link the requirement with licensing and the monitoring and the inspection and so on. Uh, what I will do here is just to let everybody know that the neurotherapy now in the United States is the subject of, uh, uh, at least I'm talking about the Eastern United States, you know, United States is huge. So I represent, I represent the East Coast, mainly in New York. Uh, neurotherapy is a star at the moment, and we'll save going through all of the details because I want to talk about pathology, but I just listed this when we first uh, faced this uh, uh, issue of our medicine, we should answer all of these questions. Uh, what are the targeted cancer therapies are? How are target for targeted cancer therapies identified? And how are targeted therapies developed? What types of targeted therapies are available? And how it is determined whether a patient is a candidate for targeted therapy? What are the limitations of targeted cancer therapies? And what are the side effects of uh, targeted cancer therapies? And what targeted therapies have been approved for specific types of cancer? Uh, in my uh, form of uh, long presentation, I go through all of this and describe the challenges and how we overcame all of this. But for the sake of the time, I'll move to the area of uh, my expertise, uh, which is the uh, cervical uh, pathology. And I'm very glad that Dr. Uh, Mokhtar is here, so very much she will follow what I'm talking about. So I will just uh, skip here to this slide, just to show you at the moment what's approved in the United States and FD approval. And I want to tell you two things about the FD approval. FDA approval for drugs will allow the insurance company to negotiate the payment. <coughs> Without approval of FDA, there is no uh, payment. So, but it's not a guarantee that this will be paid, but it's offering the avenue for negotiating payment. The other thing, if you have a FDA approved drug or test or whatever, it doesn't mean that it has to be implemented. Uh, because still this is left for the decision of different centers. But if we look at the list of diseases already now approved, varying from common diseases like adenocarcinoma of the stomach all the way to rare diseases like giant cell tumor of the bone, we have already uh, approved all of that. And just, we're not going through this, just give an idea about the approved drugs in the United States. This is just example of two cancers, the breast cancer and the lung cancer, and you have a long list of already approved drugs in the United States. Uh, let me move now to uh, one of our major challenges in surgical pathology was in the beginning, uh, the appropriate sampling. Should we do biopsy, should we do cytology, should we go with media scopy uh, or uh, whatever? And now it became a fact in the United States that we practice as multidisciplinary tumor board. And it was interesting, Dr. Nagla from Cincinnati, she said that lung tumor board is in Wednesday. It happened that we have the same thing in Wednesday also, we have our tumor board for, uh, for lung. Uh, we meet now every week and we communicate uh, about all of these decisions. Uh, one of the, uh, just uh, uh, the issues that we went through how to obtain tissue. And we have, for each type of cancer, we have a leadership committee. And uh, we organize the uh, discussions and the rules and we set up a policy for each cancer, uh, uh, a policy to how to uh, process the sampling and so on. And we agree already now on the FNA cytology. And just quickly, I have to tell you that uh, FNA cytology, everything now is going through cytology. We go through the trachea, pierce the trachea and sample the lymph nodes. We go through the esophagus, <coughs> pierce the stomach or the duodenum and sample the pancreas. And we can uh, do immediate uh, 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 evaluation and determine if we have enough tissue. We do additional passes and we make cell block and the cell block serves as if it is a tight section. 
uh, we are also now moving into uh, utilizing self-transfer technology. <coughs> the cytologist near slides itself. We have now the mechanism to divide it into little pieces and we use it for all tests, including molecular testing. One of the major issues we faced was, and now we are pathologists, we don't only make diagnosis, but we triage the specimen for molecular testing. And one of the major problem was uh, exhausting the tissue we have for immune studies and the non-tissue available for uh, molecular testing. So the example of what how we overcame this, for example, now we do, we cut from the practice section of the cell block uh, at least 10 or 20 uh, sections to be saved before even we make the diagnosis for uh, potential uh, 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 molecular studies. Besides, now we are very good now in utilizing this news of psychology. Uh, I will jump to, for the one minute left for me, for my specific uh, recommendation here. And uh, my recommendation here is, and uh, I have to say, uh, Dr. Mukhtar, I have uh, um, uh, uh, the, what she has in her uh, group is considered uh, a world class example of what we can do in uh, Egypt, even if she selected the British uh, system. But the whole idea is we, uh, as I said, we in the right space, we don't say we have to but we do. So standardized surgical pathology reporting is a must. And what the example and the model is Dr. Uh, Mokhtar, in the United States we use the CAT cancer protocols. And if I just click on this, it opens immediately. So what happened is every health system, they develop the templates and we are as pathologists. It's more or less marking uh, what we have so we can have uniform uh, reporting to all the oncologists and in the patient chart. This is a must. So how can we enforce this? We link this to inspection. We have uh, annual inspection for any lab every year, and one item of the inspection is looking at reports. And if the reports not fulfilling all the items, it's a deficiency, and if it's not corrected for a few months, you're not getting a license, you lose your license. So the way we did it in the United States is we overcame the point of we have to buy, actually linking this to licensing and the renewal. Not only this, we are buying now a uh, uh, heavy program, uh, QA, Q improvement program, that they have, uh, we have to show it as a lab, and we have to be up to date. So to summarize this, as I said, we need to standardize the surgical authority reporting, and we have the biggest example in Egypt, Dr. Mukhtar. We have to standardize processing of surgical pathology specimen. The utility of specialist studies has to be mentioned in the report. Uh, you know, all we know about pathology, uh, as we are in the States, is through the patients coming for treatment or second opinion. And there are certain diagnosis has to be made after certain studies. And if you didn't do the certain studies, you have to mention in the report that for optimal diagnosis, this and this and this required. So the report is complete. And uh, the other thing, as I said, the laboratory inspection authorities in the United States, there is the CAP or the College of American Pathologists, beside many other authorities. This is annual. This is no joke about this. You don't fulfill the inspection item, you lose your license. So I will stop here. And